kingdom come, let your will be done, Yahweh.
you to take hold of your neighbor's hand. We are going to pray in this place. If you can speak in other tongues, I want you to hear you speak in other tongues. I want you to hear you speak in other tongues. You are not whispering, you are speaking. Mandore be via katala labade. Mayande kaya harbia katala ba. Relele veda. Mayando koya harbia katala ba. Rala laba ba ya choko ya mayate ka. Rala laba de kaya harbia katala laba ba. Rala laba de shala de maha. Mayakatala laba ya katala laba ya ne ma. Mayande kaya harbia kata. Rala laba de ya da maha shia kata. My soul says yes. My soul says yes. Abara kata ya. My spirit you are supposed to pray until you feel your prayer because prayer is tangible I have a kata. prayer is tangible you are supposed to feel your prayer you are supposed to say you are praying hallelujah the next coming three minutes can we pray Mandoya? Huh? we bless your name Lord for the open heavens over this place we bless your name for portals. We bless your name for portals. Ibaya kacha, ala maya kacha, lebere, lelelebe shante maha. We bless your name for portals, for portals of heaven over this place, for portals of your glory over this place, the portals of your presence, the portals of your shift. Ayamaya kacha, angelic, angelic move, angelic shift. We thank 
you, Lord. We can sense it. Eleva Yakata, Mayanda Kayebe, Vila Lavada, Yakata Lama, Mayato Koya, Rava Baba Baba, Vila Tokoya, Mayakata Lava, Eleve Shiatata, Rakata Lava, Eleve Shiatere, Eleve Shikaya, Amanda Kata, Rana Lava Nikata, Eleve Shiatana, Mayakato, Eleve Shate. What the word you pray in Maracata, Evando Koya, Ramada Kata, in Lalabade, Sia Katala, Mayando Koya. Can I hear the loudest shout and celebration in this place? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. World to World International. Can we celebrate God in this place? Ibara katala mande kaya baria katala ba. Relelebe shate kaya baria de kaya ba. Rala la mande shakata la mande kaya ba. Ria te kaya ba ria kate lebe ria de kaya ba. Rala la mande shala lebe shala ba. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, thank you. We bless your name. Oh, we honor you, Lord. This morning, in the name of Jesus. We want to 
once more again we put our hands together for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many are excited in the presence of the Lord this morning? Yeah. Hallelujah. How many, how many are saying Ebenezer? God has been with us. Yeah. We want to totally appreciate, hallelujah, the leadership of this school. In the name of Jesus Christ, all the staff members in this place, the headmistress and their team, we just want to say thank you. You gave us, you, you gave us the greatest, the greatest welcome in this place. In the name of Jesus, the Lord that we serve, bless you. The Lord that we serve, increase you. The Lord that we serve, multiply you. May the glory and the presence of the Lord be all over this place. May the portals of heaven be all over this school in the name of Jesus Christ. We bless the Lord for that. Hallelujah. I'm here to announce that this is our last Sunday here in this place. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. My God. As we are shifting, going back to our original place, I decree that there is a shift that is coming over your life in the name of Jesus Christ. As we are progressing, going to another level, you are also progressing in the realm of the spirit. There is a shift in your finances. There is a shift in your relationship. There is a shift in your prayer life. There is a shift in we refuse to be at the same place. We refuse to be at the same standard. We refuse to be at the same level. Your tongues are shifting, Abayakacha. Your prophetic eye is shifting to another level. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare. Your spirit of warfare is shifting to another level. Your... If you hear me say yes, yes, yes three times. Yes, yes, yes. Ah. Hallelujah, just move your, your hand like this and say, I, I said the shit. There's something that is happening in the realm of the spirit. There's something that is happening upon my life. I will not tire nobody. I will not remain where I was. I carry God. I carry the glory of God. I carry the fire of God. I am a united. Put your hands together for Jesus. I prophesy over your life. Yeah. I prophesy over your life. May things begin to double down. In the name of Jesus Christ. May, 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 the, may the move of God be so clear and evident upon your life. Yeah. May those who ask and say, where is your God? May they see your God in action from this very day. May your God answer their call in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare every error in your life, let it be corrected in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, I saw an error under the sun. Hallelujah. Where servants were riding on horses, but the priests were walking on foot. I correct every error in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Every Every servant on your horse, I bring them down in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone in your position, I bring them down in the name of Jesus Christ. I correct every error in the name of Jesus Christ. I lift you and I put you where you belong. The Bible says we are above only and never beneath. If you hear me speak in other tongues in Jesus name. Hey, Shabada. Ah. Ah, give your three neighbors a high five and say, meet you at the top. Tell them I'm changing from today. Give, give, give them and just tell them, prophesy over their lives. Tell I sense God upon my life. I have the calling of God upon my life. Tell them what you are called to do. You might be called to be a business person. Tell them, I have the call of God upon my life. Some of you are, are apostles in the marketplace. Some of you are apostles in the political arena. Some of you are apostles in the realm of the spirit. Some of you are, tell your neighbor, I can sense the thing of God upon my life. As I'm standing here, I can see angels all over this place. They have come, hallelujah. I am a yakata. Hey! Pane gore Rasi muka Vura zinzi Itza naya 
Kereke Katsiri Rai Kore Rine Simba Sisambite Sitene Se Kore pastors, our ministers, our elders, our deacons, in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Can we greet our mother? She's in the house. Pastor Joanna, she's in the house. We celebrate your life in the name of Jesus Christ. We bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Can I greet, can we greet and welcome all those who are watching us online in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. We take our seat. You are playing here with Tanda until we finish. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. I come here this morning. Hallelujah. To minister to you on a topic that says how to build spiritual altars. Hallelujah. We have been talking about a shift. There is a shift that is taking place. And we have been praying about on families, about families with families um, during our evening services, and we will continue to do so in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! Next week Sunday is Easter, so is Easter Sunday is the Resurrection Sunday. We will be at our own place in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! We will try to squeeze everyone that we have one service uh, there in the name of Jesus. So we we'll put chairs. Some will sit in the on the on the uh, 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 walking path, some everywhere, hallelujah. Some will even sit by the ceiling. But we just make sure that we are there. So if you come late, hallelujah, may God have grace on you. In the name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. We are celebrating the goodness of the Lord. I'm going to speak on building, building altars, hallelujah, divine altars. Uh, God will help me, hallelujah. Oh, Shabbatia there. Isaiah 5, 5, 5, Isaiah 55, verse 6 to 8. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Isaiah 55, verse number 6 to verse number 8. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And 
to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Father, we thank you this morning. We are praying in Jesus' name. May the cloud of your glory overshadow us this morning. And may thy will be done in our lives in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you. Amen. Life is, put it low, life is a battle field. It's either you are fighting and winning or you are in ignorance and suffering. It doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, life is a battle. Hallelujah. Give your neighbor a high five and say to them, life is a battle. This is why the Bible calls you an overcomer. You cannot be an overcomer when there is nothing that is resisting and challenging you. We are overcomers because there are things that come our way. Hallelujah. You are supposed to understand that the battle of life is not fought through feasts. Awuli impi yempilo sebensis pagera. Paul tried to help us and says, our weapon, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of the stronghold. Hallelujah. You have weapons. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, you have weapons. But it is laziness and ignorance that keeps you complaining. Some, they even complain to God. Why did God allow this to happen? I'm here to answer on behalf of God this day. It is not God. It is you who allowed it to happen. God <laughs> was not involved. How many of you know that even when the devil rebelled from heaven, God did not leave his seat? It is not God who threw him down. It is not God who fought him. You will not start by fighting your battles. <laughs> the devil was rebelling direct, fighting God direct, but God did not fight. God already has a system that fights on his behalf. So what you need is for you to know what to do when you are under attack, not to call God. The greatest error of humanity, especially Christians, is to make God a secondary option. The greatest evil of humanity is to undermine the importance of spirituality. In our generation, spirituality is never considered or discussed when people talk life issues. Little do they all know that actually the life they are trying to talk about is spiritual. People never ask you how spiritual you are before they make a decision. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, the greatest error, we always consider physical things, material things, tangible things, the things of this earth for us to make decisions. There are people today, they relocated to another city, not considering their spiritual life. They considered how much they will end there. They considered how much <laughs> promotion they're going to get there. But they never considered spirituality. I want to ask you today, wherever you are, was it a divine instruction? I, I, I have a very good question for you. I know you are married. And when you tell people, hallelujah, you say, my man, 
has arrived. We are not arguing. The only question we are asking, did you consider the spirituality of the matter? Now you are calling God as if God works for the fire brigade to come and quieten the fire in the house. But when you built the house, God was not involved. Now you are, you, are, you, are, you are saying to him, where is God? But when things were okay and you decided to build your house, you never consulted God. You consulted the hair, you consulted the weak, you consulted the foundation, you consulted the teeth, but you did not consult God. This is the error. Let me tell you, if you are going to correct things in your life, start dealing with spirituality first. Because things are happening in the realm of the spirit. You are no party if you, are, you don't have a spiritual. I have a... Hallelujah. I've heard people pray for jobs. They never mention their spirituality. Lord, I want a job in a blue chip company. Do you know what is a blue chip company? Give your neighbor a high five and say, brah, look how old you are. You have to go back and start things where they begin. In the beginning, God. Even sometimes when we advise our children on which career to choose, no one speaks to their children on spirituality. Some of you, your children are at a marriageable age. All you are telling them, don't marry a man who is not working. Don't marry a... Hey, my sister. I remember one day discussing with my daughter. I said to the, if you found Omalume, the first thing, I, they have to interpret my tongues. I'm serious on that. I will not have my children marry witches. My children will not marry my enemies. My children will not marry drunkards. No! Can, can I talk to all my daughters here? Never allow foolishness to come into your head. And you, you see a guy who has not found God finding you first. God is big and is everywhere. Why is it that he can't find God that he has found you? You are in trouble. When I in your foolishness, you think you can change him. When he could not find God. I wish I can call people one one and sit with them and say to them, you. Let me tell you, it met. Do I have people here, we, we, we have worked with God for a few years. Please, can you call people aside and tell them the truth? Call people aside and say, sit here, let me tell you the truth. Sometimes people don't know why we speak like this. Because we were never told the truth about situations in our lives. You remember, you remember the prayer of Job. Job prayed and said, God, send us an interpreter. Someone who can tell us about our lives. That person you sent love emoji. Especially the one with the heart and the spectacles of love. Are you, did you consider the spiritual aspect? Do you know impartation? The realm of the spirit. But the realm of the spirit is it's, it's dangerous. That's, you can see people putting suits here. You don't know what happens in their home. I said building the altar. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, help me. I can leave you wherever we, we, and then we continue. Hallelujah. Life is driven by spiritual patterns that are formed by human beings. Uh, 
Can I just give you a quick example? I think all of us, we know how spiritual evil foundations are made, are created. Can I help the ones that don't know? The material that builds evil spiritual altars is called sin. There is not, nothing bigger than that. Go and research it. If you find it, come and, come and talk to me. All the altars we are fighting right now, the material that is used on that, it's called sin. All the evil patterns that we then fight, we were praying, we are scattering things. We are the, the, the material, because I want to tell you material that you're going to use to build spiritual. But let, let, let me give you the material for evil altars, for evil patterns is sin. If you hear anyone giving anything else, it's a lie. The material is what? Okay, I'm trying to get an example. Okay, let, let me use David for you to understand. Let me use David. Hallelujah. In 2 Samuel chapter 11, aren't you read the Old Testament? In 2 Samuel chapter 11, you see David going on top of a house. Hallelujah. After others have gone for war. And David sees Bathsheba. Isn't he calls her, he sleeps with Bathsheba. I want you to understand that's chapter 11. In chapter 11, he, he comes up with a plan to kill Uriah. Go read it nicely. Even when he asked and said, Who is that woman? The person who answered, he said, This is Bathsheba, the daughter of so and so, the, the wife of Uriah. So he calls, he takes Bathsheba, he sleeps with Bathsheba, Bathsheba gets pregnant, pregnant. He, he comes up, you see, sin will give you all strategies to sin more. After he come up the plan to say, hey, you go home, one hour, he said, I'm not going home. Then he, he comes up with the plan how to kill him. He says, put him in the crossfire where bullets are severe, where the war is severe. And he gives, Uriah was a good man. He gives Uriah a letter. A letter that was announcing his destruction. Let me talk to you. Not everything that is given to you is a gift. You don't know this. Let me tell you. I don't want you to be stupid. Paul says, we are not ignorant of the devil's devices. David gives to Uriah a letter. I think in his heart he was thinking it's a letter of promotion. While well, it was a letter of destruction. Uriah takes the letter with all honesty, humility of a servant. Gives it to the captain, Joab. He's put at the front, he dies. Chapter 12, God comes. Should I read scripture so you may understand? Chapter 12, God comes with, through Nathaniel. Nathaniel comes with a story. There was a man who had many sheep. Hallelujah. And there was a man who had one. He went and took the one, the, the man who had one. And he killed the sheep. David says, that man must die. And then Nathan, you see, sometimes when you do your nonsense, you think, you think it's not grave enough. You think it's not dangerous enough for your children. You think it's not dangerous enough for your future. But the man of God comes. Then David said, that man must die. Then the man of God says, you are the man. Uh, chapter, I said chapter 12. Please, can you try for me verse 16? I, I, I want, I want uh, 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 let me see. It should be just chapter 12. I, let me rush. I just want to do seven minutes on, on this. I just want to show you something. Chapter 12, what does verse 16 say? David, I, therefore, besought God. Sorry? That David besought God. That's 16, God, God yes. 13. Number 13. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, the Lord also has put away thy sin. Did you hear that? God said what to David? Your sin has been forgiven. The sin has been taken away. But not the consequences. Go back to be verse 10. Verse number 10. Yes. Now therefore the sword shall never depart no, from thy house. No, go verse 8. Verse number 8. 
And I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that he had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the next verse, that's the one I want. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord? Did, did, did you hear that? The wherefore you have despised the commandment of the law. There is no sin, whether you call it lying, whether you call it uh, uh, what, what, uh, white, there are some sins that are called white by this generation, whether it's white, black, green, yellow, it is a despising of the commandment of the law. Listen to what he says. Read it. Thou, sorry. Yeah. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord yeah. to do evil in his sight? Hey. Thou hast... Hey. Hey. Listen to this. When I you think you are hiding, but God says whatever you are doing is in his sight. Read it. Thou have killed Uriah the Hittite with a sword and taken his wife to be thy wife. And he has slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Listen to this. The sword. The sword that killed Uriah. The Bible says it is now directed to the children of Amnon. Amnon, uh, 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 in, verse in chapter 13 now, let's go to chapter 13. In chapter 13 now, Amnon raps his sister. These are jo jo uh, David's children. Remember, jo David had committed adultery. These ones are not only committing adultery. They are committing a crime in, uh, in fornication. So he raps his sister. You understand? After raping his sister, uh, the name is Tamar. You, uh, those who don't know. So, Tama had a brother who was called Absalom. Absalom seeks to kill Amnon. But for two years, Absalom was quiet. Two years. But the consequence, they don't die. The altar is still standing. It's a pattern that David set. David set a pattern of adultery. He set a pattern of murder. He set a pattern of lying. His children had no choice but to face the same thing. So, Amnon, in, that was chapter 11, 12. Chapter 13, Amnon raps his sister. Uh, and then his brother kills Amnon. These are David's children. Remember what God has said to him. He said, you have brought a sword in your house. You have built an altar. Hallelujah. The most, God then says, if you read the Bible, the, God says, you did this in secret, but I will do it against you in public. If you read chapter 16, chapter 16, is it chapter 16? Yeah, it should be chapter 16. Around verse, uh, I don't have it in my notes, but uh, how did I even come to you this way? Let me check on something. It should be chapter 16. Uh, try verse 22. Verse number 22. Yes. It gives and says, So they spread Absalom a tent. Ah, read it like a preacher. They spread. So they spread Absalom a tent upon the top of the house. Uh -huh. And Absalom went in, in unto his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. Listen to this punishment. When David was old, Absalom, his son, wants to kill him. David runs away from home. He leaves his wives, the concubines. Absalom calls the whole of Israel to come and watch. They spread a tent on top of the house. And Absalom begins to sleep with his father's house, wives one by one in public. Remember, the father had seen this thing started on the roof. Let me tell you, whatever you are doing and you think it's a small thing, you don't know the problem you are causing for your children and the shame you are bringing your family. This is your son. Now I think you want to read the Bible. I thought you had read it. You can read it. God had said to him, you have done this in secret, but I will do it to you in 
According to David, when he did this, he thought he was covered. He was trying to cover a sin, isn't it? But little did he know that you can't cover it from God. That's why God sent Nathaniel, and Nathaniel tells me exactly what he has done. So, the evil altars that were built, but that are being also, some are still being built by you. They can only be forged through holy, righteous, pure, godly altars. Because the game in the realm of the spirit, we don't fight using feasts. In the realm of the spirit, it's an altar. Can it's an altar? If we are to remove that, I have seen people who call for deliverance every week. Because the issue is not about the cocoon you are locked in. The issue is about the altar that is speaking against your life, speaking against your family. So how do I build holy? How do I build a godly altar? Today I'll just give you one point. But you can add this point. Just holiness, purity, obedience. But let's build on this one. Hallelujah. The Bible says, seek ye first. Seek ye the Lord while he can be found. I want to say to people that are here, God is foundable. God wants to be sought. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in truth and in spirit. Meeting God does not depend on him. It depends on you. That's why he says, draw nigh to me and I'll draw nigh to you. So before you make a move, he doesn't move. So, <laughs> hallelujah. The, the first level of seeking God is called praying. Prayer is many things. But one of them, it is the compass that locates God. Let me talk to somebody that is here. You are not backslidden because you no longer go to church. You have backslidden because you no longer pray to the level you used to pray. If you used to pray for an hour, the sign that you have backslidden is now you can't even make it 20 minutes. <laughs> Be <laughs> I am a yakata. Please, tonight, today, I just want to sharpen your compass to locate God. Without prayer, you can't find God. The Bible says, seek God while least he can be found. Your prayer life de defines how much of God you carry and how much of God you can manifest in the world. You can never manifest what you have not prayed. Can I talk to all preachers and all ministers of the world? You don't minister because you have a song, but you minister because you are prayed up. Sometimes you will not even be having the song, but you have prayer. Prayer will be able to locate the song of the day. Let me talk to the church of God. It's high time we go back and take our prayer showers and we begin to pray once more again. Because the church is long backslidden. If you leave prayer, you are not a child of God. You can be a church member, it's allowed. The sign that things are not okay in the realm of the spirit that when prayer cannot be continually in your life, you now pray programmed prayer like prayer for Satan. Even the devil knows that after saying Baba Wait, you say Ose Zuluin. Give your neighbor a high five and say, you know, something must have happened. Let me tell you, you choose when to pray. You choose how much time you can. There is no one who can pray for you. It doesn't matter how anointed you are. You have to pray. <sighs> Hallelujah. You have church is full on Sunday morning. Where are you getting the praise that you never prayed for? Where are you getting the worship that you never prayed for? Hallelujah. Our homes, 
They used to be tabernacles of prayer. But nowadays, our homes are hubs of gossip. Our phones, they used to send messages of prayer in the morning. I will not continue. Hallelujah. So, a praying person, now I'm going, a praying person builds two altars at the same time. When you are praying, you build the altar of the spirit or a spiritual altar. What is called a spiritual altar? Hallelujah. This is a mobile altar. <laughs> Everyone who is prayerful, they have a mobile altar that they have. That's why you discover that if they move into a place, there is something upon them that moves with them. You remember the children of Israel. The Bible says they, 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 they were covered or they were led by the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. So as long as they were moving, the pillar is moving. They are, when you are a praying person, you erect a mobile altar. So when you are in a bus, hallelujah, that altar is there. How many of you have been in near miss accidents? Sometimes you can't even understand how you came out. You saw the car coming. You saw the other one coming. You waited for an impact. But for some reason, the impact might be a review mirror. Hallelujah. But you didn't even pray. Sometimes there is no time to pray. But your altar that you move with speaks for you. They are people who are altar carriers. They are people who are atmosphere carriers. When they enter, enter a place, things begin to shift. Ah, oh, judge, what happened to you? Years back, before I got married, me, I loved God and I still love God. We went to Ndabas in Duna. We were doing door to door. We were preaching door to door. We were boys with the three of us. Hallelujah. So we, you know, we, we, we saw a, a homestead where there were a, a number of women. We don't know what they were doing. So when we got there, we said to them, they started laughing at us. And uh, we said to them, no, Ah, she, 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 kuluma One of them said to us, Bantu Abang, young as you are, you understand? Have you had enough of the world so that you can start talking about Jesus? So, uh, we say to them, no, we are asking for one thing. We not sing anything, standards. Kupela. We just want to pray. You understand? So, when we entered the house, when we entered the house, the kitchen unit started moving in their house. The kitchen, so they were scared now. The kitchen unit started moving. We are not praying. We just entered the house. The kitchen unit started moving like this. Started moving. Everyone was now quiet. So when the kitchen unit was moving, I stood up. I said to the kitchen unit, go back to your place. The kitchen unit started going back to its place. And when the kitchen unit went back to its place, they were all seated down. They were all quiet. I started to preach Jesus Christ. All of them, they lifted their hands. But someone, she lulas is in van keli, wangu hapa singela ma ota. You get to your place, you're afraid of witches. Hey, boss and lawyer. Hey, ngilelo mshugu. Yes, I'm going to go to the seagull. Hey, when, hey, when. You are a moving altar. Even when you are sleeping, the altar is speaking. Oh, yeah, ba. Mandore, be, riha, kacha. A moving altar. A moving altar. I pray for you. You are not supposed to be a Christian on Sunday. You are not supposed to be a child of God in church. You are supposed to be a Christian in your office. You are supposed to be a Christian in an itchy. You are supposed to be a Christian when you enter. 1992, we used to have prayer and fast, fasting every month. Four brothers. So one day we were coming from an all-night prayer. We entered a bus. There still used to be omen buses. We are coming from Geta. 
We enter the bus. When we enter the bus, this woman who was at the back seat come crying and saying, bad people have arrived, wrong people in this bus. She went out of the bus. She fell from there. We didn't even cast the demon out. We went for a wedding. We went for a wedding. Hallelujah. Our, our faces were not appearing on pictures. I used to keep that. I don't know what happened to that phone. They were not appearing. Let me talk to someone that is here. Let me tell you, God is not the God of the church. God is not the God of the apostle. God must be where you are. Allah, Allah, my own tabele, what tabele in coma. What you shall give me, let me tell you. Muyo yen selom seven. See, God is in the inside of you. Carry God to work. Carry God to your house. Your children are under attack. Why need you have God? Because you are not a praying person. In prayer, I'm, I'm recharging my altar, especially the mobile one, because he, Hallelujah. What is it? Lula is in twenty. As in Sima. I am a Yakataya. Why is Lula? Nile Alta Englayo. There's something that speaks for me. When people look at me, when I go for an interview. 1995, I went for an interview with one of my workmates. So when we were seated, waiting to go into the interview room, I asked him, I said, which job are you applying for? He mentioned my job. I said to him, we have lost. It's mine. So he went in first. He was there, inside there, for about 30 or so minutes. And then when he came out, I said to him, how is it? He was a shona guy. said, Zakao Mam Katum. So I when I entered the interview room, there were three men that are seated. The chairman said to me, How much do you want? He didn't even ask me, Who are you? He didn't even ask me, What is your name? Unfortunately, then I didn't know money. I only said 2,000. They said, Do you want 2,000? I said, Yes, I want 2,000. Uh, they said, Okay, started writing. I said, When can you start? So after. I, they said we are done. We'll call you. So I rushed it down. When I got to the, to the elevator, this guy was also going down the elevator. He looks at me and say, I'm done. I said, yeah, I told you you're wasting your time. I'm done. The job is mine. Let me talk to you. When you have an altar that speaks for you, it doesn't matter who is against you. It doesn't matter who comes against you. The altar will minister to people that don't know you. The altar will tell them their name. Let me talk to somebody. I hear your name being mentioned in high places. I hear authorities and spirits. They are talking about your name. If you are that person, say yes, 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 yes. There is a generation of praying people. I'm talking about people like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They went into the fire. Their altar was also in the fire. There is something called a mobile altar. Something that you move with that is supernatural. Oh. Hey, I have been too ordinary, it's enough. It's right time I put on the clothes of where I come from. It's right time I put on the clothes of my kingdom. Because I am an ambassador of heaven. Where I come from, we carry altars. It's not that people don't understand when they read the Bible. You know why Daniel was not eaten by lions? Hallelujah. He was from prayer. And he was being punished for prayer. <laughs> so his altar spoke to a lion. When he came, the altar announced, this one is a God. He is not prayer. If you think I'm joking, the other guys, the following morning, who were thrown in, the Bible says they were finished in the air. Even their bones did not hit the ground. 
to show you how dangerous it is to be a man without an altar. If you don't understand the power of an altar, in the New Testament, we meet Peter. The Bible says people who run, not that Peter was praying, no, he was just mobile. When they hear to Peter, we are a market. Babe Kichman, Abantu Beso Vega, Abantu Bakulayo, Kulain Gapita, Utuangaye Shula, Aso Shato Gapita. Peter had an altar that was upon his life. That's why the Bible speaks to you that at the time of prayer, Peter on John, hallelujah, they were going to be the, they had time for prayer. Ah, Mananja, Allah. I pray for a revival in this place. I'm speaking about people, not people of pride, but people who carry the altar of God. But it depends on how much you have carried in prayer. Your children are not sick. It's because when you have nothing to offer at home, they now know the language of witches more than the language of God. I think I'll stop here. The altar. We have mobile altars. So, there are angels that are entering this place. You see, what, do I, what you must understand, there are angels that are moving in this place. Ashes, you just help me because the power of God is moving in this place. Mayanda kaya bahari akacha ya Allah mayakacha. You cannot enter a place and there is no difference. You cannot enter a place and they don't sense that is God. Now I tell you, we worship with Satanists. They come even in our midst because we have no altar. We are just ordinary people. Yanda maye yekacha la mahari akacha. Every negative spirit that tries to hide in this place, I command you to be manifested right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, the move of God, the shift of heaven, every sickness I try to hide. I am Ayakata in your body. I command it right now. Hey, Shalade. My Kaya Hari Akata. There's somebody who entered Don Sai and Kaven, Don Sai and Kaven. So I command it. I command that thing down by the fire of God. The fire comes upon you. Yabada. Shakateke Yabada. Mando Rebe Riakatalaba. Shakatele Rebe. The fire of God is moving right there at the back. Ayamaya Kataha. We are moving altars. Yande Shabada Rakatalade Emanda Kayaha Riakate Ketelela Mayando Koyaba Riakatalaba. Somebody who is in this place, you have been fighting witchcraft in your dreams, witchcraft in your home today. I give you the fire of God, I give you the torch of the fire of the Holy Ghost right now in this place in the name of Jesus. Ah, elelebe shalana mana, maya kache lebe ria kacha kacha, imando ko ya ba ria kacha laba, our God. Give me five minutes. Give me five minutes. There is an altar. There is an altar. We said you have a spiritual altar which is mobile, but there's another spiritual altar which is stationary, or we call it physical in the realm of the spirit. That altar is found, it is erected at your prayer point. You see, when you go for prayer, 1992, evangelist Nicholas Bengo came and he taught us a song 
I don't know who were there during those, it was 1982. But during those times, the song used to go like, So, he was actually saying, those who, who grew up at home in rural areas, there was two like elsewhere. We are humble, we are everything, but we are paying the window anyway. And you find that Lape and Umbunda all are corner. So, the boy of Umbunda. So, the evidence. Gulen Salela ever corner. So, when you go for prayer and you are praying, it's not everything that goes with you when you are gone. Some of the grace, they fall on the ground. You see, like, 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 like the anointing that comes and rests at the hem of, 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 of Aaron El Mayakata's robe. Uh, at the hem of Jesus' robe. That's why the, the woman with the issue of blood said, only if I can touch the hem. were in the house. There is a certain place you must locate as your place of prayer where you go down and begin to pray at that place. There is a certain place you must go. Ministers, uh, can I teach you some secret? It's not every day when you pray in your jeans. There are sometimes where you are supposed to go there and pray in the suit that you're going to use for ministry. If you if you if you read the biography of Uba Upengu, why koga a kogi suit a kogi tie? Eh, kambe keza. Ewe se kari suku shala panzo. Enja wena ishala guyo. Those abanyo kuto abanyo ba ba be lunguza be bone kuluma lengilos. Ngagusa ya ba ya kala. Ngagusa sa se seva. Ube se kamba le mobile altar. But kule altar e sala ikona pan. E vula amazulu. If you didn't understand the issue about Jacob's ladder, that ladder was not created by Jacob, and it wasn't created on that. Yeah. If you read correctly, you discover that Abraham had built an altar there many years ago. So what actually happened is that on that day, uh, Jacob went to a place where there was a physical altar that was erected by his father, grandfather, years back. And still, angels were still ascending and descending. I, I, I wish people that are here would understand me. When you when you when you change Linelli changes in Rosogusan, you don't just go to a house and just get there and say it's beautiful. Ah, it has a swimming pool at the top. Ah, I'm the set that person. It depends who was in that house. Because if it was an evil person, there's already an altar of open heavens of evil over that place. I'll give an example. There is a man in the in the Midlands. Uh, early 90s. This man was, a, was known as a man of prayer. So, people would go to his house for healing. They would go to his house for ministry. Then this man, one day, a family, they brought somebody who was deaf and dumb. He could not hear and speak. But the unfortunate thing, the man was not there. The pastor was not there. So when they arrived, Mount Fundis said to them, the man who needs healing, where the man of God was sit. So they, he sat there. Little did they know, when that man was praying, that's the chair you would hold on to and begin to pray. So it was a, a physical permanent altar. So when this man who was deaf and dumb came and sat, he, he did not sit on a chair. He sat on an altar. After 30 minutes, after 30 minutes, that man spoke in Shona and said, Dinokumbira Mvura. The family that had come with him, they ran out of the house. Because it's a true testimony. Because that man... 
from birth he had not spoken. But the mistake he made is that the altar that was making him deaf and dumb uh, came in contact with the altar of the man of God. And the Bible says when power means power, the lesser power must bow. And the man for the first time, he says, I need water. The mother ran away. The sister ran away. The brothers ran away. The father ran away. He remained by himself. And then the woman of God just said to them, no, just come in. If we come to your house, what can we encounter? They never think that when you wake up at 3 a.m. and you are praying, you're wasting time. No, it's building an altar. And why do you need prayer? Because the altar, the spiritual altar is only built on what is called God material. So when you pray, you get a revelation of God. That revelation is a brick on the altar. Because the God of salvation is not the God of war. If you only know the God of war, you will die. Hallelujah. No, sorry. If you only know the God of salvation, you will die without fighting. So in your walk with God, God reveals himself page by page, brick by brick. One day you will reveal himself as El Shaddai. You build El Shaddai. The next day he comes as Jehovah Shalom. You build Jehovah Shalom. One day he comes to you, El Mayakaja, as the Lord your healer. You build God Jehovah Rapha. Let me talk to you. You build your spiritual altar only using God's material. And God's material is accessed through prayer. You see, you see why when I Uvuga Uchayo, years back when I was young, can I give you a testimony? I, I, I didn't know God the way I do now. I was in grade seven. Should be around 86 or something. I, I visited a certain family. Do you know what family? You guys, parents, you just say, hey, go for sleepover. Please pray for us. So when I went there for sleepover, it's not a sleepover, it was a holiday. So one day I was attacked. I dreamt someone with the, do you know, rod of iron that were red, like bent in fire. So that person was placing those rods of iron in my back. You understand? Like, so I woke up screaming that I'm burning. The next day I was so sick. So sick that I was dying. Then I say to them, you have to take me home. We needed a train to go home, so we got into a train. When I got home, a man of God. Then we used to have men of God. They didn't even have cars. He came on a bicycle to our house. And that man started to pray. When that I knew I was dying, but when that man, if my brother, my brother is here, see, do you know he knows? I got so sick that he, re he left the bed. We used to sleep on the same bed. My, my brother left the bed. He was afraid to see me die. But then I didn't understand spiritual warfare. I didn't understand what has happened to me. And I didn't even understand what happened to my body physically. Hallelujah. So that man prayed. But we, when we went to the doctor, I said, I have asthma. Because I could not breathe. But that thing did not enter my body from anywhere. It, it was something that was laid on my bed. Even right now, you can ask my wife. Those marks are still there. More than 30 years ago. But you know what? When I started to know about spiritual warfare is when two angels entered my room. Because I had prayed to God. I said, God, if you heal me, because that thing, I, it had troubled me. I would collapse. One day I collapsed Main Street, putting on a white, a white shirt. And the blue trousers. I used to work for a bank called Beverly Building. We were smart, you know, with the B there. We were smart. I collapsed. And when I woke up, people were surrounding me. And, you know, people were saying all sorts of things. I went to God and I said, God, because if, if you don't know, God has spoken to me. Around that time when I was attacked, that I was supposed to be a preacher, I told God that, no, God, me, I want to be a businessman. I'll be sponsoring the. So I went back to God and I said, God, if you heal me from this, I'll preach the gospel. So during the night, two angels entered my, my room. They extended their hand over my body like this. Something like a needle, something like, you know, a sharp 
fell on my chest and two beings left my body like that. One, two. When the last one went out, I said, I'm healed and I woke up. That was 1992. I have never had asthma attack up to this very day. Because it wasn't asthma attack, it was witchcraft. They are things that you are saying they are scientific. But because you don't have an altar in your house, you will die swallowing tablets, not knowing that what is choking you are spirits. We want to pray today. Because tomorrow we are coming for prayer for families. We are raising. Go home and begin to pray until your home. I, I, these notes, I know. If I go to these notes, we'll finish tomorrow. Just listen. Until your home. There are people you are supposed just to invite to encounter God. The unfortunate thing about this generation, if you think I'm, lo I'm lying, they don't like God. Right today, put a post and say, come to the city hall and meet God. No one will come. But say to them, Gulam alone. You will not have people. You will not have room for them. Let me talk to somebody else here. It is important to have God in your house. When the devil kills your prayer, he has already killed you. He has already killed the future of your children. He has already killed everything that is around you. But I want somebody who will kick everything in their house today and say, I'm going back to my place of prayer. I'm going back to touch. Some of you, you left your prayer hanging. Hallelujah. 2015. Go back. Go back to your prayer. Of course, you will not start flowing. You will start bit by bit, but you go, Ribada Yakaya, Mando Rabari Yakatalaba, Limando Koya, Rakatala, Limando Ko. Like a well of, of, of water, you hear that you have hit something that is happening in the realm of the spirit, and things will begin to change, Allah Mayaka, one after the other. Let me tell you, you have the responsibility of your life, you have the responsibility of your children, you have the responsibility of your future. Some of you, you can't even now plan for your future because you are overwhelmed by sin. I want us, this is what we are doing. We are just waiting to get the confirmation that church is all right. We are going to have a <coughs> conference for prayer. We are going to pray. Do you know that if we pray a lot in this place, we open portals of heaven. And this becomes a permanent, hallelujah, altar. Anyone who comes here, they encounter, <laughs> they encounter God. You know why? Let me talk to you. As, as our homes, we must open portals through prayer at home. Your relatives should love coming to sleep at your house. Because when they sleep there, they, they dream heaven. Some of them, they are busy in their home to be dreaming snakes. And then you have to be a big Let me tell you, there is a level in God that's called the God of fire. The consuming fire of God. When you touch that level, when you add that level on your altar, you become untouchable. Whosoever touches you, they answer to God without even you knowing. Remember Moses, they gossiped about him. And Moses, why do you for people who gossip about him? Even his family, brothers. Miriam and uh, Aaron, they start saying, ah, hey, Moses, hey, umpazo, okay, hey, ole kala. God had to answer such kind of things. He called them and said, guys, come. But if you read, you realize that Moses, Moses, the Bible says he went behind the desert. And behind the desert, he encountered the God of fire. He saw a bush that was burning without being consumed. And he turned to see. God says, take off your sandals. You have just stepped at a place that is holy. So when the sister and the brother, they tried to talk about Moses, God says, no, I'll punish you. Aaron survived because he was putting on an effort. Sometimes don't talk with certain people because of what they are doing. They might be covered. Do you know there are, some, there are people that God will not, uh, he will not, fast because you have a cover, Ikamalak. <laughs> but it's called Sabosieza. So Miriam was hit by lepros. There and there she was white just for talking. I pray God's children, we may learn to shut up 
And sometimes when somebody comes to talk to you about another child of God, be bold enough to tell them, shut up, I'm not a dustbin of spirits. They, they go again, Cora, Dotan, and Kamban. They say, say, no, he's not the only one who's called. Then Moses says, listen, guys, those who are standing with these guys, just go on. When you touch that, when your altar, because your altar is built from salvation, you say to God, like, it's from salvation, you built it, it comes through grace, you built it, it goes through presence, you built it, it goes through glory, you built it, it goes through fire. When it goes through fire, I want you to raise those two altars. Don't go without an altar. If you know you are coming from a family, airbound who built altars through sin. Can I, can I tell people that are here? What you are doing is, is so bad for the future seat. Remember, I'm not never had the future, but it was because of David. I've heard people who say to me, ah, everyone can sin. Even David, the man after God's heart, he was tempted. My brother, did, don't complete also the consequences that came to the man after God's heart. Read it in bold and underline. Before you boast yourself in doing nonsense, understand the consequences of it. And also understand the consequences of the people who raise altars. There is, a, ah, there is a man in the Bible. Do you know? Aaron went on the mountain with Uri. Okay? Some call him Uyu. Depending where you went to school. So, who? Children, if you can read. There is a time when God wrote and said, I have given. Hey, The spirit of wisdom, understand, that was the grandchild of wisdom. So whatever you are doing with God, you are building an altar. That will affect your children, whether in the positive or in the negative. I have, I have, I have, I have, I have done a vow with myself and with God. I will not be the reason why my children suffer. I will not be the reason why my generation is in trouble. If it takes me to be looked down by people because I serve God, I will serve God, but you will see my children. Ah. So, I want us to pray today. I think we still have time. Hallelujah. There is no boss or demo. We still have time. I want us to pray. Our prayer this week is not God kill what God do what. Our prayer is, God, I come back to you. I'm coming back to the altar of prayer. Our prayer is a prayer of repentance. Lord, I left my altar of prayer. Because that one you know yourself. You don't even need a prophet. Our prayer is, Lord, restore my energy for prayer. I'm lost. I have backslidden. But Lord, I have left my place. How many are ready to pray? Those who are watching us online, the good Lord bless you. May you raise prayer in that nation you are in. Raise prayer over your family. You can fail to do certain things, but don't fail to pray. The good Lord bless you. Hallelujah. I want us to pray as we go.